And before I get started with this review, if you get a moment, surf on over to www.darrenmiles.com. If you ever thought about an exciting career in real estate photography, take a look at Camp Miles. This is my upcoming seminar. I do this twice per year. And basically what I do is um, I teach people how to break into real estate photography as a career or to supplement their existing business. Like a lot of wedding photographers, they tend to struggle. A lot of portrait photographers struggle. Real estate photography is incredibly lucrative and there's a lot of it out there. And moreover, it's a tremendous lead source. Um, but anyway, take a look at Camp Miles, something you might be interested in doing. It's also a great time of the year to be down here. It's March 22nd through the 24th. Um, it's really warm and beautiful, and if you're living in a place like Chicago or New York or someplace up north where it's really cold, it's a great opportunity to get out of the cold and come down here to our tropical paradise. So with that out of the way, again, apologize for the shameless plug, but let's get on to the review. Thanks. Hi, I'm Darren Miles with Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, sunny, and warm, because you know it's in the middle of winter down here, Southwest Florida. Now, just a quick note to my subscribers, I want to apologize for the lack of new content recently as we're just coming out of the busiest time of year down here. And as many of you know, I shoot a lot of real estate. And January through May is the high season in Southwest Florida. And in preparation for that high season, sellers and real estate agents alike get geared up and ready to sell their homes during this really busy time of year. Which means I get flooded with requests from, to photograph homes from like mid-November until the end of January. And this year, for some reason, was considerably busier than usual. Couple that with the usual pa family portrait season that we get, you know, in preparation for those holiday cards that go out every year. And then the time frame between Christmas and New Year's when families visit Southwest Florida and want a lot of family portraits. I've also been dealing with my studio being broken into, but that's another story. So needless to say, it's been an incredibly busy and stressful last two months, and I barely had time to go to the bathroom, much less even consider reviewing a new piece of gear. But today, I finally get the opportunity to review this. This is the new Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 VR FL ED lens. It's easily one of the most coveted lenses to arrive in 2016. With promises of both amazing image and build quality, reviewers across the YouTube sphere have universally praised this new Nikon 70 to 200. The camera store guys gave it their lens of the year. And Tony and Chelsea Northrop put it in their top three lenses of the year. And even the angry photographer, who usually hates 70 to 200 millimeter lenses, has gushed praise all over this lens. But there's one huge drawback that may in fact scare away a lot of potential buyers, including me, who were initially put off by the lens's really high price. So is the new 70 to 200 millimeter really all of that, and is it worth its credit card melting price point? Well, let's take a look. So first up is the build. And the first thing that strikes you, especially if you're used to or if you've used the previous VR2 version, is that this one is definitely lighter than the old lens, which came in at 3.39 pounds, whereas the new 70 to 200 comes in at 3.15 pounds. That's about an 8% decrease in weight. Now, that's not to say that this lens is light, because it's not, but it's slightly less backbreaking than the VR2 that it replaces. And part of the reason why it's lighter is because the casing here is kind of plasticky, or much more plasticky than the VR2. Now, the focus and zoom rings have been reversed, which is to say that the zoom ring right here is closer to the front element, and the focus ring is closer to the mount. The zoom ring is really, really light and fluid. It moves around with, like, no resistance at all. It feels like it's floating on air. Personally, I like a little bit more resistance than this, but it's okay. The focus ring is nearly as light and has very little resistance, too. Now, this may sound kind of petty, but when the rings are this loose, it kind of has a cheapening feeling to the build quality to me. Again, it's not bad, but it just feels a bit too loose to my hands. Now, again, that's just my opinion. Now, the lens mount is fortunately made out of metal, and there is a gasket that helps prevent the ingress of dust and moisture. Now, like the VR2 and most of the 70 to 200 millimeter lenses out there, the front filter thread is a very common 77 millimeters. The lens hood is kind of plasticky and lightweight, but it's reasonably durable as well. Something new this time around, Nikon has included four autofocus buttons on the outside of the lens. It's a nice ergonomic touch and it works really well. Nikon claims this latest version of vibration reduction gives us up to four stops of image stabilization, which is really great for low light situations. Now it's really difficult to prove that's an accurate statement, but there's nothing in my test that would indicate otherwise. There are two versions of vibration reduction. First is normal. 
that's when you're hand holding and shooting still subjects. And then there's sport, and that's when you're shooting panning action shots. Now on the inside, it's a very complicated formula of 22 elements arranged in 18 groups. And there are nine rounded aperture blades, which when coupled with 200 millimeters of compression, that should render some really beautiful out of focus bokeh rendering. And unlike the previous Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter lenses, this one doesn't suffer from the same kind of focus breathing that we experience with the VR2. Meaning when we actually set this lens to 200 millimeters, it should actually be closer to 200 millimeters, whereas the VR2 rendered somewhere around 140 millimeters when the lens was set at 200. Now that should mean even more compression and even more beautiful bokeh, but we'll see. Now one other thing worth noting is the lens color, color, the lens color here, which rotates or allows you to rotate from landscape to portrait mode very easily. It's a nice touch, even if it's common with 70 to 200 millimeter lenses. So all in, it's a nice combination of magnesium alloy construction with a more plasticky barrel casing. The rubberized focus and zoom rings, they have a nice feel, but they're really loose without a whole lot of resistance. And you'll have to get used to the reverse placement of the focus and zoom rings. Lastly, the lens is in fact weather sealed. And at $2,800, it better be. So for Bill, the new 70 to 200 millimeter from Nikon gets a nine and a half out of 10. So next up is AF speed and accuracy. And if you're a wedding and or sports photographer for a living, then you know just how critical quick and accurate autofocus is to get the shot, be it the winning touchdown or a critical or intimate moment between a bride and a groom. Well, I'm pleased to say that in all but the most challenging of lighting conditions, the new 70 to 200 f 2.8 delivers in spades. Focus is self-assured and instantaneous on all the bodies that I've used it on. The D810, the D4, the D750, and the D500. It's a simply blazingly fast AF performance. Just, I mean, just breathtakingly quick and awesome. The minimum focus distance has also been improved from 4.6 feet to 3.61 feet. It's about a 25% improvement. But let me just demo the focus speed really quickly. I have it attached to the D4 right now, and the beep is on. And I'm gonna focus around the room at random things far away and up close. This way you can hear just how fast the focus performance is. So here goes, far away, bam, up close, bam, far away again. Yeah, I mean, this thing is fast and self-assured. I think you get it. But let me tell you, it's also spot on accurate nearly every single time. In fact, the only time I ran into issues was in really, really low light. And in those situations, the lens did in fact hunt a little bit, but I'm talking near blackness. Now it's about the only time I lost any semblance of confidence. Now in fairness, I don't have a lens that wouldn't have struggled, struggled under those exact same circumstances. So for AF speed and accuracy, it's about as close to perfect as any lens that I've ever used or tested, meaning the new 70 to 200 gets a perfect 10 out of 10 for AF speed and accuracy. Oh, yeah. So next up is what counts, and that is, how are the optics? Well, in a word, they're freaking amazing. And let's be honest, if you're gonna charge nearly $2,800 for a lens, you better have top shelf optical quality. And I'm pleased to report that the new Nikon 70 to 200 delivers. From f2.8 onward, and at all focal lengths, it's an optical specimen. This thing is the GOAT, you know, the greatest of all time. In fact, if Tom Brady were a lens, he'd be the new 70 to 200 f2.8. It's that good. So good, in fact, that it has me rethinking whether I'm actually gonna keep my Canon 70 to 200 because that was the last thing that kept me hanging on to Canon. The Nikon is super, super sharp, has unreal bokeh rendering, is fantastic against bright light, etc. It's amazing. But as with all of my reviews, don't take my word for it. See for yourself. The next two to three minutes will be a series of stills and video clips demonstrating the optical mastery of the new 70 to 200 f 2.8 FLED lens courtesy of Nikon. And if you're a wedding photographer or a sports photographer, sell some gear right now and buy this thing, even with its oxygen depriving price point. It's beautiful.
So last of his value, if there's a wrench in the gears, well, it's here. Because at just under $2,800, Nikon is asking a lot for this lens. In fact, it's the second most expensive 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens in the marketplace today. Coming in right behind the Sony A-mount 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 G lens. However, in Nikon's defense, the lens also offers some amazing optical attributes. For example, it has barely any noticeable chromatic aberration, it has great performance against bright light, the optics are super, super sharp, and the bokeh is just beautiful. I could go on and on, but these attributes also come at a very stiff premium. At least Nikon can claim that this lens is right there with the absolute best in the marketplace today. Now, if you're a Canon shooter who's been on the fence about whether they should make the switch to Nikon because of the focused breathing issue with the existing VR2 version of the lens, nothing shooting at about 140 millimeters when it was set to 200, well, your solution has finally arrived, granted at a really stiff premium, but high prices for top-end optics are unfortunately becoming more and more of the norm. So for value, the new 70 to 200 millimeter from Nikon gets a nine out of 10. So to wrap up this review, we gave the new Nikon 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 FL ED lens a 48 and a half out of 50, and our coveted Editor's, Cho Editor's Choice Award. And that's in spite of the lens's eye-popping price point. The final word. Well, it's pretty clear that Nikon has created the latest must-have lens for wedding, sports, and portrait photographers. Granted, this lens is pretty obviously squarely aimed at paid professionals or high-end enthusiasts or hobbyists who want the absolute pinnacle of image quality in a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and are willing to pay for it. It's simply amazing to me just how sharp this lens really is. So good in fact that I'll probably sell my Canon 70 to 200 Mark II and my Nikon 70 to 200 VR II just to get my hands in this lens. Clearly in my opinion, Nikon has just hit it out of the park with the new 70 to 200. But I do wish the price point were just a little bit lower than it is, but just the same. This thing certainly is the new best-in-class lens in the 70 to 200 millimeter focal length. Hats off, Nikon. It's a job well done. I'm Darren Miles of Darren Miles Photography, based here in beautiful, sunny Southwest Florida. If you like these reviews, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until the next time, happy shooting. All right.